Okay, so and, um, <clears throat> as far as uh, fighting when it comes down to um, the actual thing and the application, like I had a fight and the guy grabbed me in the headlock and uh, I did a move that we would compare mm -hmm. to uh, a single palm change. Right. Is in the fight when you're doing the actual technique, is the um, is it the repetition repetition of the technique that helps you, or is it the whole uh, you know how uh, you, you, your ver what you believe the what you believe the fight is? Is it more the mind or the body? Can I ask you a question yeah. to, to kind of answer that? Since you're the one that did it, did you know you were doing it when you did it? Uh, I couldn't into the situation, into the pressure came, yeah. and I knew what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I didn't yeah, know before yeah, then. I didn't know. I didn't have no that's preconception. That's the answer. Okay. That's the answer. That's the answer. And um, the more preconceptions, the more hits you take. Yes. yes. You know, the more you're kind of looking for this thing that you know already from the magazine or from the teacher that you you know. Your favorite teacher's so, move, you know, so you, this going, is our signature move. So if you go and saying like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I got a two finger knockout," you're still caught in the fantasy of this yes, thing. Yes, yes, I think so. And yes. I, and um, uh, we all have our moves, right? That those of us who have uh, taken on um, some kind of martial art as our as a, more than a hobby, we all have our our best move, and um, that's that's that is as as it is. But the idea that you can um, beat everything with your with your favorite move, and that you can make your favorite move happen on anyone, I think is a, is the reason why so many um, of us are uh, beat up badly by uh, even by untrained street ruffians. Yes, yes. <laughs> because it didn't go the way it goes in the yes. studio. Yes, because there, you know? there is a lot of uh, throw your right hand. Yeah, yeah but you know, and I'm keeping that right hand there for you to finish it off, <laughs> exactly. right? Yeah, that, that kind of um, orientation is, again, I think it does, there is, a, there is a long history of training that way in the um, karate school, I think they call it the Ipon uh, uh, Kumite, where there's one kind of blow, one, one blow thrown and it is negated and returned. And uh, as opposed to Jiyu Kumite, which is freestyle sparring, and which means that any blow can be used, or any you know any blow within within reason can be used, and the rhythm is broken. <laughs> now, Nippon Kumite, as I remember as a, as, a, as a long ago when I was a boy, was very stiff, stilted. You know, you knew the guy was going to stand right there and throw one blow, one hard as hell blow, at you, and you were supposed to like negate it and throw one hard as hell blow back at him. And both of you then return to your corners, satisfied that you've done your thing right. But the same kind of training would not prepare, would not, would not necessarily have said you are ready now to represent karate to the world. That is a green belt training. You see, and I just think a lot of a lot of these men that we see um, saying that they are um, representing a, a given system of martial arts are just they, they were not graduated yes. by a, by a uh, by a responsible person. Yes. And, um, you know, it's a little bit of humble pie to go, like, yes. I, st I still feel it after all, after I give you my answer of all so many years in martial arts that I'm, I am um, just beginning to appreciate even the, the first things that I've learned in a, uh, in a, in a, in a uh, comprehensive way. And it uh, didn't mean that I, did I lose a bunch of fights or did I get my butt whooped? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, you know, to really be able to show this, to rely on it for, for uh, to show the little old ladies and the children and the big guys and the, anyone that what you're doing is can, can be helpful to them, that takes some insight, that takes some time, and it takes some kind of like a graduate level. Right. right? So when you have the, the teachers in New York, you know, the, the system is saying some of these teachers are unqualified. You know, if you're teaching me math, sure you may have a high school or a college level diploma in math, but maybe we want a graduate student in math. You know, somebody really dedicated to math dedicated. to teach even the first graders because the, the, their sophistication with math is needed to serve those who are slow at it, you know? 
um, to serve anyone and everyone. So for most systems, there is like a play that builds up that helps you get to the real thing, like cheese yes, out for what you Yes, exactly. Because um, doing 52, I kind of thought uh, slap boxing was that yes, way yes. to help build up the reactions. Yes, but then yes. you have you have some actually saying that slap boxing is the fight. No, you it cannot slapping, be. It can't be. Or finger. It can't be. Can't I mean, be. even I'm not a 52 blocks expert, but help, you've helped me understand it. This comes from the prisons. And I can't see a prison fight being uh, decided by slaps or uh, by uh, uh, dance moves. But I can see getting getting the art perfected through those slaps and dance moves. And even having some music on. But you know, fights don't usually happen with music on. Uh, or, you know, to a, a James Brown rhythm or to, uh, <laughs> you know, even to, you know, <laughs> You know yes. what I mean? It doesn't happen that way. It tends to be when uh, things are, the chips are down and, you know, things look bad. It's when you really need to know what you're doing. And okay. you did not cut you off. But getting back to that graduate thing now, as uh, someone who, you know, seafood teacher, you know, how, when you're dealing with a master's, there's a lot of guys running around saying the master's are 45 and they saying, well, I want to fight you and your style is not, what, how do you, how would you help judge a master? Would this be one of the qualifications you look for as uh, an older man still seeming like he's caught in his 30s or he still wants to fight or... There, you there's know? no shame in wanting to, uh, to compete. And competition has been proven to be a, uh, a, a, a hallmark of the American psyche. You know, we are competitive people. Um, but I do have a, a sense of, I want to answer it in, in, in this way. Uh, master of techniques. Oh, okay. There you go. And in the karate system, we have um, dance. Your your first dan, you're supposed to have mastered all the t the fundamental techniques of, of 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 the ranks below you: white, green, purple, brown. Um, maybe there are a couple of new techniques in the in in the first degree black belt level. Second degree third degree there's no more technical learning it's all about promoting the art becoming a better teacher proving that you're a good man so is that man a master of karate that is a third degree black belt he's a master of the fundamentals of the, of the movements um, I would just say that I think most of these guys that we're talking about are, are have mastered the fundamentals of their movements of their of their fighting with that doesn't mean, master that doesn't mean that they are um, uh, spiritually enlightened beings and that's what I think we've confused yeah. because of the kung fu movies and the yes. and the expectations of, of that <laughs> and, uh, and using yes. these Asian and Eastern and foreign words that uh, uh, that this somehow has a mystique to it of spirituality and sure enough uh, we are often disappointed to find out that even you know, yoga gurus from India are molesting little girls and boys. Uh, they were masters of putting their foot behind their head, but they didn't master keeping their penis in their pants um, when the opportunity arose. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've, I've met a lot of these so-called you know? masters, and, yeah. and, and, like, and it's almost like they'll, they'll say, well, hey, you're a white belt, but I'm coming to beat you up. And it's like, yeah. does a master... But we would his, or would a teacher confront his own students? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, again, the confusion is that word master. And, uh, I'm not denying these guys their, their, their sophistication, in other words. Um, it, takes a, it takes some doing to be uh, good at um, um, any of these arts by the names that we call them. It takes some doing. And the guy wants to be called a master of it because he's uh, ranked in this organization, or because his teacher said you should, you know, I consider you a master now. So be it, but I'm not, I'm not um, impressed or uh, confused by titles, and neither should you. Yes. Um, um, I call people by their name. Um, uh, I like to think of everyone as a, as a child that has grown up into someone. And I respect the child in, in all of us, in yes. me and in you and in everyone. So this guy's saying that he's a 45-year-old that's going to come down here and kick your butt and he's a master of uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu, I'm sure he should be held accountable for a mastery of his Wing Chun skills. But just by the very um, um, declaration, it does kind of show that he's still dealing on a, a 
on a young on a young man's mentality of competing and looking for uh, accolades or to make a point. Yeah. And we hope that in enlightenment is different than that. All right. Well, thank We're, you so much for your time. <laughs> uh, issue.